Hello, everyone. We are live tonight. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, fan base. Woohoo! We're all here. Tonight's lecture Freedom by Neville Goddard from October the 28th, 1968. Whoo, this is some fine print tonight. Let's get close. Len asked, what is the greatest of all the commandments? God answered, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Accept this commandment, live by it, and you will be free from all secondary causes. There is only one God. He is the Father of us all, who is above all, through all, and in all. He is a universally diffused individuality whose name forever and ever is I am. You may not be aware of who you are, what you are, or where you are. But by being aware, you are mentally saying, I am. Every conscious being says, I am. And if there is only one I am, then I am one individual diffused. I am the sole cause of all that is. All things were made through imagining. And without awareness was not anything made that was made. In the eighth chapter of Matthew, one of the miracles of scripture is recorded as an acted parable. It is said that when he entered the boat, he fell asleep and a great storm arose. So they woke him saying, Lord, we perish, save us. And he said, why are you afraid, O men of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the wind and the sea and there was a great calm. If there is only one cause, then he who quelled the wind and the sea is the one who caused the storm there cannot be another. If there is confusion in your life and you resolve it in your imagination and the world bears witness to what you have done, you caused the change. And since there is no other cause, then did you not cause the confusion also? There is only one God and Father of us all who is above all, through all, and in all. If he is in every being who says I am, and there is only one God, no one can accuse another, for God's name is not he is, but I am. No matter what appears on the outside, I am its cause. Assume full responsibility for the things you observe. And if you do not like what you see, know you have the power to change them. Then exercise that power and you will observe the change you caused. If you are truly willing to assume that responsibility, well, you are set free. If this universal diffused individuality is in all, then the incarnation must be regarded in a different light. We are taught that the incarnation took place 2,000 years ago by a unique individual who was the incarnate God. But I tell you, humanity is the incarnation. The central figure personified as Jesus Christ is the perfect archetypal figure everyone must express. He is, the, he is called the true witness, the firstborn of the dead. Now incarnate in your body of flesh and blood, you are dead in the sense that you have forgotten that you are the creator of all things and do not see yourself creating anything you observe. The morning paper tells of what she, he, and they are doing. And you cannot relate their actions to anything you have done yet. There is only one cause, only one God who is resident in you as your awareness, your own wonderful human imagination. The parable tells us that God 
entered a boat and fell asleep. Well, humanity is that boat, the ark where God the Father creates as he slumbers. Even though you do not know the people you read about, if the reading disturbs you, you are the cause of that conflict. Huh? Let's read that again. Even though you do not know the people you read about, if the reading disturbs you, you are the cause of that conflict. <laughs> All imagination. I am dreaming, causing the misfortune and unhappiness of those whose lives I have touched with feeling. When you awaken and recall your dream, do you always know the people there? Do you know the children that were yours in the dream? The people who frightened you? You never saw them before, so how could they be other than which you caused? You do not recognize them, yet you, the dreamer, caused them to do what they did. The same is true here. If the actions of a seeming other cause a motor response in you, even though you do not know him, your awareness is the cause of the storm. But when you awake, Memory will return and there will be a wonderful calm. God, the universal, the universally diffused individuality, is asleep in everyone. His transcendent revelation is personified as one called Jesus Christ. Thus, personification awakens the memory in you as to who God the Father really is. God did not break up the I am and give each one of us a portion of himself. He gave each one individually his whole being. Again, God did not break up the I am and give each one of us a portion of himself. He gave each one individually his whole being. I am cannot be divided, and I am God the Father. If you haven't yet discovered this, I am still asleep. In order to discover your fatherhood, you must find God's Son foretold to be yours. While asleep in the state of Saul, you do not recognize him. And when you ask, eh, whose son are you, young man? He answers, I am the son of Jesse, the I am. Then you awake and recognize God's son, David. Are you not Jesse? Are you not God whose name forever and ever is I am? It takes David to reveal you to yourself. Yet you were his father before you fell asleep. And now dreaming your life into being. You fight against seeming others, calling them devils and Satan. You endow your shadow world with causation, thereby becoming a divided being. Then God is not divided. There's no devil. There's no Satan. There is no being outside of your own wonderful human imagination. I, even I, am he. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. And none can deliver out of my hand. Deuteronomy 52. I am the Lord and there is no other God. I form the light and I create darkness. I make the wheel and I create woe. I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me there is no God. Isaiah 45. He who creates the evil creates the good, the wheel and the woe, the light and the darkness. A wheel is a, a welt, you know, when you get slapped, it's a welt. I digress. He who kills is he who makes alive, and he who wounds is he who heals, and there is no other God. If you really believe you are the one spoken of here, that it is you who create the evil, the good, the weal, and the woe, that none can deliver out of your hand, then you are set free. You will never again believe in another, 
but know that your life is self-created. That you create the storms as well as the peace and the calm. No longer will you believe he, she, or they did it, for you will recognize them as reflections mirroring either the storm or the peace and calm within you. Now, having entered the boat called the Ark, God fell asleep and there he remains until the dove brings him word that the flood of illusion is over. And dramatized as an acted parable, it is said that Noah put forth his hand and brought the dove into the ark with him. Well, this is beautiful imagery and true. In my vision, the dove descended through what appeared to be crystal clear water. He seemed to float, using his wings like a swan. Lighting upon my extended finger, he smothered me with kisses as the vision came to its end. Because everyone is the whole God, everyone will personify the perfect archetypal specimen called Jesus Christ. Lost in confusion, not knowing that humanity is the incarnation, men think of this archetypal specimen as the incarnate God. Yet the one grand commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The word Israel means the man who rules, not like a God, but as God, because he knows he is God. And the word translated Lord is I am. Now let me translate it for you. Hear, O man who rules as God, the I am. Our I am is one I am. Again, and the word translated Lord is I am. Hear, O man who rules as God, the I am. Our I am is one I am. We are not a bunch of little I ams. Our I am is the one I am who is God the Father. Well, if this is true, then God cannot be divided. And the whole of him is wherever you are, wherever I am. There is no he, she, or they in I am. If you will completely accept this, you will be set free. Rather, you will set yourself free. You may not immediately see the effect of what you have done in your imagination, but it must come because there is no other creator to stop it. All things are made through awareness. And without it is not anything made that is made. It is imagination who claims, I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. I form the light and create darkness. I form the evil and I make good. The weal and the woe and there is no other. When the Jesuits speak of Satan, devils and demons, it is because they do not know the greatest commandment. All of the Ten Commandments are based upon the negative thou shalt not, except one, which is love thy father and mother. The commandment found in Deuteronomy 6 with ten words contain all ten commandments in an entirely different presentation as hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Maybe you cannot accept my words now. Perhaps you feel the need to blame another, to have a scapegoat and believe the cause to be something you ate or drank. But why did you do it? What caused you to do exactly what you did? A disturbance in you. The storm in you caused the gland to be out of kilter. The gland cannot be the cause of your distress, but your dream can. The world, not knowing the single cause, will try to find something on the outside. But there is no secondary cause. See, I received a letter this week from a lady who shared this self-revealing dream. And she said, 
I am in a place totally devoid of comfort. There are no curtains at the windows or rugs on the floor. My son in clean overalls, they're sitting in straight back chairs against one wall while my daughters in starched long cotton dresses, they sit opposite them, looking much like the Quaker children here. My children appear to be without emotion, without feeling or creative abilities. We are waiting for father. A young boy enters with a message stating that the work which had to be done in the children is finished, and therefore the father is not returning. And then the scene changes, and we are in a farmhouse. I look out the window to see fields of golden grain ripe for the harvest. And my eldest son, now radiantly happy, comes running into the house exclaiming that for the first time he has created for himself. His entrance was like magic transforming the room as all of my children began to use their talents, creating, laughing, animated, and alive. Before, like automatons. They had only obeyed the father by executing his will. But now that his work is finished, he has withdrawn himself and they have become creators in themselves. Well, what a beautiful experience. She saw the world in miniature form. The father's withdrawal is recorded as his death. Well, he tells us, unless I die, thou canst not live. But if I die, I shall arise again, and thou with me. A little while, and you will see me no more. Again, a little while, and you will see me as yourself. Having withdrawn to dwell within, it is from there that you move and not from without. All that I, the Father, am, you will know yourself to be. If God is the father of all life, then you are the father. If he is a creator, you are a creator. Whatever God is, you will know yourself to be. Now God comes out of the desert with signs and wonders. The most outstanding sign is that of the fiery serpent, for everyone who sees it lives. As your journey out of Egypt begins, the fiery serpent is released when the curtain is torn from top to bottom and all of the rocks are split. You are destined to fulfill scripture and, like me, know from personal experience that you are God the Father. I have shared my visions with you, telling you how true and wonderful the story of scripture really is and that there is only one way of salvation. Although unnumbered volumes have been written, given you many, many ways of redemption, but there's only one. I am the way, and there is no other way. Matthew tells the story of his awakening in dramatic form, claiming they awoke, saying, Lord, we perish, save us. It is the unearthly wind which awakens you, and you are its cause. Awakening within your boat, your ark, you leave it behind as you enter an entirely different world as God the Father. Having purposefully imposed the restriction of death upon yourself, knowing that you had the power and the wisdom to overcome it, you laid yourself down and fell asleep in the ark. And when the time is fulfilled, you awaken within that ark, come out and witness the symbolism of your birth from above. A few months later, you will fulfill Psalm 89 as you find David and your memory returns. In the book of Samuel, Saul, the demented king, made a promise to anyone who would bring down the giant opposition to Israel that he would set his father free. Well, this is done by discovering the father of the son. So Saul asks David to identify his father, and David says, I am the son of Jesse, the I am. So the father is set free when David brings down the giant, who, in your sleep of death, opposes you, and your memory returns as to who you really are. 
Although I answer to an earthly name and sign my checks with it, I know who I am. I can tell you who I am in the hope that you will believe me. But in truth, I am only addressing myself, for I am in you and you are in me and we are one. Everyone will have the same experience and in the end, we will all return to the one body, one spirit, one Lord, and one God and Father. We will all return from the victorious march through death as the same God, but expanded beyond our wildest dreams because of this excursion of the mind into a world of death which seemed so final. I cannot promise that if you accept this 100%, you will not have a headache tomorrow or that your boss will not fire you. But if you accept this, you will know that your boss had no choice in the matter. You will know that you caused the firing. Maybe your dreams transcended your present limited position in that business and only by being fired could they be realized. One day I was fired from J.C. Penney and Company, working for a year and a half and running their elevator and being their errand boy, making $22 a week and paying $5 in room rent. I could not understand it when they let me go. But my dreams, my desires transcended my position there. So they had to do what they did in order for my desires to be realized. Believe me, you are the cause of the phenomena of your life, be it good, bad, or indifferent. If to you the news is distasteful, you are the dreamer of that distasteful storm. But the day will come when you will awake to discover that the storm is over. Then there is only one cause, and that is awareness. I know it is easier to give advice and show the other person where he is wrong than it is to acknowledge that he is only reflecting the wrong in you. Whoa, again. I know it is easier to give advice and show the other person where he is wrong than it is to acknowledge that he is only reflecting the wrong in you. <laughs> it is difficult to accept the concept that the world is bearing witness to your thoughts. But it is true. If you do not like something or someone, do not look at it or them. Look within to the one who is causing the image. There's only one God, one cause of all life. He is not only above all and through all, he is in all. The universally diffused individuality is in each one of us in his fullness, dwelling in each individual body. The father sleeps until the storm is over. Then he awakens and rebukes the storm that he created during his sleep. And there is a great calm. If you will accept this as your philosophy of life and not turn to the left or to the right, but claim you are solely responsible for the phenomena of your life, well, you will live it much easier. You will find it much easier to live. But if at times life seems too hard to bear and you find a secondary cause, you have created a devil. Devils and Satans are formed from man's unwillingness to assume the responsibility of his life. Oh, devils and Satans are formed from man's unwillingness to assume the responsibility of his life. To see another, to see another other than self is to build a golden image. Asking a priest for forgiveness, calling him father in spite of being told to call no man on earth father, seeing him as an authority, uh-oh, man goes whoring after a man-made false image. <laughs> So what is freedom worth to you?
If you stop short of the ultimate, you do not really want freedom. Well, if you were enslaved, what do you have that you would not be willing to give in its entirety to be set free? Do you really believe there's only one God who is in you in his entirety and his name is I am? You do, although you have forgotten who you are, where you are, or that you have a son. One day the wind will awaken you during a storm. And as you come out of the ark, the storm will abate. The memory will return as he who has always been your son stands before you and calls you father as scripture unfolds within. And then you will know that the eternal story was always there. It was a sealed book until it unfolded from within. Let the world remain in the storm if they want to. But if you accept my words, you will be set free from any secondary cause. And you who have been causing your storm will find peace and be truly set free. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Whew. Listen, if that didn't shake you up just before bed, I don't know what will. You see, it says, no matter what appears on the outside, I am its cause. Assume full responsibility for the things you observe. And if you do not like what you see, know you have the power to change them. Then exercise that power and you will observe the change you caused. If you are truly willing to assume that responsibility, you are set free. So when we hear the word accountability, sometimes we shiver a little bit, right? But he said tonight, it's not your mama's fault. It's not your daddy's fault. Don't point fingers. Because when you point fingers, now you're creating something that you don't really want to be there. You're creating your own enslavement when you do that. Because you're now bound to the thing you've given your power to. But if, if you look at accountability as a privilege, I'm going to say that to you again. Because we, we have a lot of words attached to privilege already, but I digress. If you look at accountability as a privilege, think about it. Would you want to stay in the same groundhog day, day in and day out? At the whim and the mercy of somebody else who wants to keep you there? Uh, probably not. So here's where accountability comes in. You can break the pattern of Groundhog Day by taking responsibility for the fact that you're living it. And when you take responsibility for that, whew, you're free. Oh, but Angela, what about the government? What about it? You see, we, we forget there's a couple things here. We want to say the government's outside of us, but it is not. If you are being abused by your government, don't come for me. If you are being abused by your government, it is because you have given them your power and you tell them to rule over you. Now here's how you can change it. What type of person do you want in office? Well, that depends what type of person are you? Because remember, as within, so without. There's only one person. It looks like Donald Trump. It looks like Joe Biden. It looks like uh, Justin Trudeau. It looks like, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Marcon. It looks like um, Angela Merkel. But it isn't any of those people. 
It's you. <laughs> they are reflecting back to you. Think about it. When you hear a population, what's the first thing they say? Oh, my God, the taxes are so high. Our government is so corrupt. Why? You feel powerless within. So if you feel powerless within, <laughs> well, then you've got to exp experience powerlessness on the outside. And they are only playing the role you assigned for them to play. So you see, that seems like a hard pill to swallow, a bitter medicine to take. But it starts within the self first and it branches out from there because you expand. So if you want your surroundings to change, you have to change. What are you changing? The way you see it. If it's bad, how bad is it? Well, how good do you want it to be? See it good and it becomes good. Mm? Nobody can't cuss you out unless you've been cussing out somebody in your head already. So tonight, as you put your head on your pillow, you create your own freedom. Same way you can create your own bondage, you create your own freedom. Don't be afraid, though. Fear not. You'll get it. We get it by way of practice. Whenever you experience something that you deem to be unsavory, it came out of you. And when you know that part, you can go, whoa, whoa, it came out of me. Well, let me mold and shape it into something else so something better can come out of me. Well, you want to plant moldy kernels of corn? <laughs> Sorry, you're not planting life. They're not going to grow. There's no life within them. If you want life on the outside, you have to have life within. Anywho, I'm wanting to find that one place where he read it there. I love the fact that he reiterated the all did not fracture itself. I don't have a piece of God. You don't have a piece of God. George doesn't have a piece of God. I've got all God inside of me. You've got all God inside of you. So then, walk in that knowledge. You're not half of anything. You're not missing anything. You're complete. You are whole because the all is in all. It can't be the all if it's missing pieces. This is why if you got 100 sheep and you only have 99, what are you going to do? Go look for the one because if you're missing one, you are incomplete. So the all must gather all of us back into it because we all came out of it. I know, it seems like a lot, but Angela, what does that have to do with manifesting my job? Absolutely everything. How do you view yourself? You know what job you want, but if you sit there and go, oh, I'm overqualified, I'm underqualified. Oh, but I don't even have a referral. What What do you think? What have you just planted? You didn't plant the seeds that would reap the job. So what seeds can you plant that would reap the job? The acceptance of the job that you want. Just accept it. It is yours. And once you have accepted it, it unfolds in a way you and I can't see simply because, well, we're not the law. It's like the seed underground. You can't see it unless, of course, you use thermal imaging. But you hear what I'm saying to you. It doesn't mean because you can't see the seed sprouting that it isn't working. Right? So tonight, my beautiful friends, as you put your head on your pillow tonight, who are you? Uh -huh. Well, you know your I am, that much you know. Your I am. What am I capable of? See, those are better questions to entertain than, oh my God, what am I good for? Mm. 
It's, it's all in that question, isn't it? So take a moment before you fall asleep. And just commune. Commune with your own heart upon your bed, as it says in scripture. Is this really true? Really? I can, I can accomplish things? I can change my life? I can? Yawn. Oh, show me how I can change my life and, and be everything that you say I am. And as you surrender to sleep right there, I tell you, something will change within you. It's funny. Because if you fall asleep and you, before you fall asleep and you ask a question, you will have the answer. Well, who, <laughs> who answered you? <laughs> and yet you think this is far-fetched. You tell yourself, wake me up at six o'clock. You get up at quarter to or ten to six. Who woke you up? <laughs> You see, don't be afraid. Embrace what you are, your greatness. So, Cyber, I see you. Oh, you didn't get a notification. Well, Cyber, go back and click the bell. <laughs> Maybe it got unclicked. You know how sometimes, allegedly, that uh, <clears throat> YouTube does funny things, but I digress. Hey, Rone, Shea Butter. And for the others who've not made themselves known here on YouTube, in the chat, Facebook and Twitter in the chat, I see you still. Who's here on Fanbase tonight? <gasps> Holy macaroni. Fanbase is bumping tonight. Uh, Moza, Miss Crenshaw. Hey, Kelly. KZ is here. Matthias, Nadia, darling. <gasps> that deal. Flow Smiles. Fawn. Hey, Angela. Hey, hey. Uh, Moon, Joaquin. And I am, Flo Smiles, I gotta talk to you. I'm stuck in Canva, but we'll talk, we'll talk. <laughs> we'll talk. Listen. Practice. Practice. There's a scripture that says, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth but only such a word that is good for edification to those who hear it. The very first person to hear the words before you speak them is you. So then you hear unwholesome words. What, what do you mean by unwholesome, Angela? Oh my God, I'm so stupid. Oh my God, I'm such a loser. Nobody likes me. Unwholesome words are like the seeds of a dandelion. You blow on them and they take root. So if you stop that right now, speaking unwholesome words to yourself, your life will change. Maybe within a couple days, weeks even, but it will change. Do you know why? The trusty law of correspondence. As within, so without. How can you browbeat yourself and expect someone who meets you to elevate you? They can only reflect back to you who you say you are. So check yourself, check, 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 check yourself, right? Anyhow, don't let me preach. I am done. But rest well tonight. I know I will. Test yourselves and practice. Yes. So, there you go. <gasps> oh, oh. I am. I am said, y'all, something great happened to me today. I manifested something I really needed. Hello. You see what that is? That's a beautiful testimony. You know why? Because she's practicing every day. It does not matter what that thing is. 
Is it something that you want in, in your life? Is it something you want to experience? See it in your mind's eye and accept it. Receive that it is done. What does scripture say? Then you pray. Believe that you have received. And, you, and it is done. It's yours. What's that word? Believe that you have received it. So accept it. And so when you practice every day, those things that seem so trivial or mundane, you know, creature comforts, they're not trivial, nor are they mundane. They are part of your living experience. So go ahead and practice so that you can be like I am and say, oh, my God, <laughs> I needed it. And there it was. That's what it is. Oh, Kelly says, I feel like you are a confirmation to me from something I heard earlier. It's like you always confirm it. Well, that's the law of correspondence as within, so without. I am only a reflection. I am only a reflection of you. <laughs> that's it. it. Listen, this is what it is. When we come to that understanding, We'll see how easy it is to change our lives. Because truthfully, people, that's what they want. They want to change their lives. They don't want to continue living the same type of life. Well then, apply the law. Be faithful to it. You have been given a most beautiful power. You've been given all. <laughs> all gave itself to you. Not a little piece. All of itself. So use it. Remember the woman in the lecture? She said her children finally were using their talents and their gifts to create. Where before they were just automatons doing what they were told. But now, and that was her dream. Can you imagine waking up from a dream like that? Ah. Anyhow. I just said, don't let me preach. And I'm in here sweating again. <sighs> Rest well, my beautiful friends. Flow smiles. I will make the room private after everyone leaves their own fan base. And we'll have a wee chat on you. Well, actually, whenever you're ready, because it's your birthday. So you need to enjoy the rest of your birthday. <laughs> Countdown initiated. Five. Four, three, two, one. Rest well, everyone. Good night.